All right, thanks, Dr. Weber. Um, as he said, my name is Esther McCabe. Um, I'm going to share with you today some work that I have had the opportunity to be a part of. And it's specifically looking at sale results from calves that are selling through superior livestock video auctions. So we're going to take a look at what do buyers really want whenever um, they're going to purchase calves? What are they really looking for? <coughs> we're going to take a look at it um, really from the data perspective. But before we look at that, I want you to think, before this calf ever hits the ground or before you think about selling it, what have you already have invested in that animal? We're well, going to have nutrition of the dam. Um, maybe you developed and raised her as a heifer and you've continued her in the herd or maybe you bought the cow. So there's going to be some form of nutrition of the dam. The cost for the bull um, or the cost that you have incurred whenever you're AIing um, or any labor costs associated with that. What about the vaccinations for the cow herd um, or for the bulls that you're using as well? And then what about calving? Is there any investment in that time and in that process of calving? Because nothing ever goes wrong during that, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. So you think about this, it's already an investment before that animal ever hits the ground. You also think about all of those different components you've planned for. Right now, if you've not started calving, you're planning for calving. So if we really think about it, this is all about building a plan and how do you want to market your calves and how do you want to make it so a buyer would like to purchase them. So how do you capture that calf value? We're going to take a look at several different, um, both management and then some other things, practices that maybe you can use in your operations as an opportunity to capture some more value. We'll look at it first from a management perspective. So we'll take a look at breed composition of calves. Um, what breeds do buyers or in the feedlot do they value? We'll take a look at gender of lots. Calf crop's gonna be about 50-50 bull heifer. Um, take a look at differences with genders. We'll also look at vaccinations um, and those vaccination protocols. Uh, where's the value in those programs? We're not gonna specifically talk about castration, but I'll bring it up whenever we talk about gender as it isn't practice that you can use in your operation uh, to gain premiums whenever you sell calves. We'll also take a look at the effects of implants um, and the value of that management tool. We're also going to look at some additional programs that there are opportunities for producers to take part in. Uh, two that we're going to look at today include Agent Source or the Non-Hormone Treated Cattle Program, otherwise known as NHTC. So the data that I'm going to be sharing with you today is a project that was started back in 1995. So since 1995 um, up into 2018, we're going to take a look at some changes in the industry. Importantly, though, I want to note that starting in 2010, we began to get the data from Superior electronically. And what that really means is we were able to know more about those calves that were selling through Superior and take that into account as we're looking at price effects. Also, if you're unfamiliar with video auctions, um, we're going to be looking, looking at this in terms of a lot of beef calves. So not the individual animals, um, but the entire lot as a whole. So the information that is provided by the seller uh, to Superior looks something like this. So this is going to be the information that the buyer gets um, about a lot of beef calves. So we'll walk through this example really quick. Um, each lot's got a, lot, a unique lot ID number. And then it tells us how many of what kind of animal is in that lot. This particular example has 252 steer calves. Um, and typically, these lots are going to be about a load size. So obviously, this is multiple truckloads. Um, but typically, lots are around 100 head of calves. It also tells us if these calves have been home raised or purchased. And the current location is also very important. Um, Superior is a nationwide service, and so for buyers to know where calves are coming from and account for any transportation costs is also very important. Um, the breed type of the lot or those calves are, is described, and we'll talk about this more in depth in the breed section. There's also characteristics um, like the frame and the flesh that they're carrying, whether or not those calves have horns, um, and then are the calves in that lot of even weight and even height, or um, are they uneven? There's some other information on here, but I really want to draw your attention to this vaccination part um, of the lot. Back in 1995, whenever this project was started, this was the focus of starting the project. We're around these vaccinations, and the industry was really asking questions about the vaccinations and are calves being vaccinated, and if so, with what? So we're going to take a look at that and the changes that's happened with that 
But since that time, um, there's been a lot of changes, and so we're able to encompass more um, information about these calves. And then there's also other information on here as to whether or not the calves have been implanted. So one thing that we do take into account and look at is region of the United States where calves are coming from. So it's not really something that you necessarily have control over. Um, a lot of us are just product of wherever our grandparents or great-grandparents really stopped. Um, and some stopped in better places than others. So if we look at different regions in the United States, um, these are regions that are defined by Superior. Um, we did not make these ourselves. Um, so specifically for Superior, um, the Rocky Mountain North Central region is going to be where the highest priced calves come from um, in the summer of 2018 followed by the West Coast and then the South Central regions of the United States. So fortunately, Kansas is going to fall in that South Central region, um, so it is in a good area of the United States. And then calves coming out of the Southeast were the lowest um, regionally sale price calves. Taking this one step further, so we look at it from a region perspective, but if we take a look at it for sale price by state, Nebraska calves, lots of calves, are the highest priced um, followed by Kansas. So again, in a good area um, for buyers who want to purchase calves, a lot of that's coming down to the cost of transportation and the risks associated with that. So kind of keeping that in mind, it isn't a good area for selling calves. So I'm going to describe to you here really what kind of calves we're talking about as I go through um, the rest of this presentation. So like I said, it's about 100 calves in each lot. Uh, they're about 570 pounds on average. And then the average sale price in the summer of 2018 was just under $166 per hundred weight. So kind of keeping those averages in mind um, as we move through the presentation is that these are about 570 pound calves uh, and on average are selling in about 100 headlots. So I mentioned the gender of the lot, um, and it's well known that steers are going to be a higher value than heifers, um, and we do see that coming out of the superior data. There's about a $16.70 premium per hundred weight for steers versus heifers. So keeping that in mind, um, I did mention castration, and what you're going to notice is that there's not a bull category. Um, very few bull calves are selling through superior that are going into a backgrounding or a feedlot type operation. There's value to castration, there's value to doing that early, and there's value to doing that at the right time. And so producers who are utilizing this technology um, see that, and so those calves have already been castrated, so we just have steers and heifers. Something else to consider is, are you selling those steers and heifers together, or are you separating them out into a lot of steers and a lot of heifers? Um, the data tells us that calves that are not sold in a mixed gender lot, so just steers or just heifers, um, do have a price advantage over calves that are sold in a mixed gender lot. So just something to keep in mind um, about the uniformity of lots um, and the cattle in it. One other thing that I think is really interesting um, and that allows opportunity with selling through a service like Superior is when you choose to market your calves. And so for services like Superior, you can actually sell them ahead of whenever you're going to be shipping them. So keeping that in mind, um, there is variation in the season when calves are being sold for prices. Um, if we think about selling calves whenever everybody else is selling calves, there's a flood to the market. Is there opportunity to sell calves earlier and then work out an arrangement for shipping at a later date? So kind of keeping that in mind um, as other possibilities as a way to capture more value for your calves. Right, I said we were going to talk about those vaccinations, and so we're going to talk about calf health, and we're going to take a look at it since 1995 um, through 2018. So how do we know what a lot of calves is for their vaccination protocol? We go back to the information that's provided by the seller, um, and we take a look, and this particular lot would have been a VAC 45 lot, and one more example of a VAC 34 plus lot. Um, some producers will provide specifically what products were used for those calves, while others just say it's a VAC 45 program. So today we're going to take a look at three different um, vaccination programs um, and then one additional group. So the VAC 24 program is something that's offered through Superior. Um, there are specific guidelines for the program and products that can be used. 
But we really think about this as being kind of a one round of viral vaccination and clostridial type program. The VAC34 and the VAC34 plus programs are gonna be more of a two round of a viral vaccination and clostridial program. Something that's important to note for each of these programs, calves are not required to be weaned um, by using these vaccination programs. Now for the VAC45 program, um, this will be more of a two to three round of vaccinations. But the key difference is that these calves have been weaned at least 45 days prior to being shipped. So the weaning component, which makes this program a little bit different. And we're also gonna take a look at the non-weaned and no viral vaccinated group of calves. So we'll start with those. And if we take a look at the change that the industry has, has had since 1995 for calves that are not weaned and have not received viral vaccinations, Back in 1995, whenever we started this project, about 40% of the lots selling through Superior were not weaned or vaccinated. We look out here to 2018, um, there's virtually no lots of calves now that fall into this category. So that tells us there's been a shift in the industry. The question is, where has that changed to? We'll start by taking a look at this VAC24 program. Um, again, this is a program that's really one round of viral vaccination um, when clostridial. 1995, about 1% of the lots. Um, coming out here to 2018, you see anywhere from about 8 to 10% of the lots qualifying for this program. So producers, um, there are some producers who have utilized this program, and it fits well in the management of their operation. If we take a look at the VAC34 and VAC34 Plus programs, um, back in 1995, about 11% of the lots were qualified for this program. We look out here um, more recently in 2018, and just about half of the lots that are selling through Superior use this VAC34 or VAC34 Plus program. So this is another option, um, a program that fits well into many operations to do the two rounds of viral vaccination and not requiring calves to be weaned. And then finally, if we take a look at the VAC45 program, um, again, this program has seen a lot of growth um, over the last 24 years, and approximately 29 to 30% of lots um, are following the VAC45 protocol. So we've seen some changes, um, but really, what about the premiums associated with this? What about the financials? So how we go about evaluating the effects of these different programs um, or different management strategies on sale price is we use something called multiple regression. And so if we think about that lot example that I showed, we take into account all those factors to determine how much of an effect they have on sale price. So whenever we look at these results, um, it'll be specifically the vaccinations, but we're taking into account all the other um, sources of variation for calves. So if we start by looking at the VAC45 program and premiums associated with it, Back in 1995, um, there's about $1.35 premium per hundredweight associated with this program. 2018, um, again, about 50% of lots are qualifying for VAC34. There's a $3.07 premium per hundredweight for this program. So there may be incentive um, to use the VAC34 program in your operation or something similar. Now, if we take a look at the VAC45 program, um, again, a little bit more intensive where it's got those 45 days of weaning required. Um, 1995, um, a $2.47 premium per hundredweight. And we come out here to 2018, um, and it's just over $6 per hundredweight premium. So buyers do see value um, in this program with the vaccinations and then the weaning. However, keep in mind, not every operation is set up to wean calves for 45 days. You may not have the facilities. Um, so there are other vaccination programs available um, if this is just something that not maybe doesn't fit into your operation. So we're going to switch gears just a little bit and talk about the breed descriptions. Today I'm going to talk about them in three big groups. Take a look at English, English type calves, English continental cross calves, and then calves that have any kind of Brahmin influence. So just to go through two really quick examples as to how we describe and decide where a lot fits in this, we look at the breed type, and this lot is described as being out of Angus and Angus cross cows by Angus and Hebert Charlay bulls, black, black brockle face, and Charlay cross. The Angus and the Charlay combination, these would be English continental cross calves. One more example, uh, looking at the breed type, 
to Charlotte Cross carrying a quarter or less Brahman influence, these would be Brahma influence cabs. So that's how we go about determining um, the breed description of a lot. I'm going to first start by taking a look at the trend um, for each of these categories since 1995. For specifically Brahma influenced, um, we've seen a decrease over the last 24 years for this particular breed description. And there's about 10% of the lots now selling through Superior that have Brahma influence. Taking a look at the English Continental Cross trend, um, back in 1995, about 57% of the lots were qualifying for this breed description. Moving out to 2018, it's at about 34% of lots. So that tells us that both Brahman influence and English Continental has decreased, but our English English trend um, has increased during that time. So it's gone um, to about 56% of the lots are some form of an English English cross calf. So if we take now a look at the um, financial side or the premiums associated with these different breed descriptions, what you'll see is on the far side, um, each of those breed descriptions, you'll see the number of lots from summer of 2018 that qualified for those breed descriptions. Then you can take a look at the respective um, dollars per hundredweight, as well as um, the differences between each of those compared to the Brahman influence. So the English English cross calves sold for the highest sale price, followed by the English Continental, and then the Brahma influence lots of calves had the lowest sale price. Maybe there is opportunity in your operation to um, select what genetics you're using to produce a more desirable calf for the feed for the feedlot um, and have a type of calf that the buyers really want to purchase um, based on their genetics. So there may be opportunity um, from that perspective. To shift gears a little bit again, um, we're going to take a look at both implants and NHTC kind of together in the same category. So for anybody who's not familiar with this non-hormone treated cattle program um, or NHTC, it is a USDA approved program that requires a third party audit. So it was actually um, developed in 1999 to create for the export market for the European Union. Um, one company that you may be familiar with that does a lot of these third party audits would be IMI Global. Um, just if you guys have ever heard of IMI Global. So how do we know if a lot qualifies for the NHTC program? You look for the logo at the bottom of the lot that tells us that it was qualified. Now, by definition, these calves could not have been implanted. So you'll notice um, there where it says implanted, they were not. So this is going to be one group that we're going to take a look at. We're also going to take a look at calves, um, another group of calves. And these are calves that are not implanted, but not enrolled in a natural program. And we're also going to take a look at calves that have been implanted. So I want to start by looking at the trend since 2010 um, from the percentage of lots that were enrolled in the NHTC program. There's been a little bit of growth since 2010, but specifically here from 2017 to 2018, there's a 50% increase um, in the number of lots that were enrolled in this program. If you'll remember back to that time, um, there was a lot of talk in the anticipation of the Chinese export market um, and why potentially a lot of these calves um, were enrolled in 2018 in this program. Now, if we take a look at the premiums associated with this program, there's a lot of variation from year to year. Um, 2014, we see the greatest premium at just over $4 per hundredweight, and then most recently in 2018, um, $2.30 per hundredweight. Whether or not this is a program that would work for your operation and fits into your management practices um, is something for you to decide. But it's also important to consider the cost associated um, with enrolling calves in these programs, um, and then the, if that's going to outweigh um, the benefits that you may receive. So switching gears just a little bit and looking at those implanted calves, um, since 2010 to 2018, there really hasn't been a lot of change and the percent of calves that have been implanted and selling through Superior. What I don't show you here um, is if we'd go back to um, the 80s and then, but really the, um, the 90s, it was closer to 60% of the lots were enrolled, or not enrolled, um, were implanted. So since that time, there's been a very large decrease. Um, but since 2010, we've actually not seen a lot of change. So if we look at the price difference of implanted lots 
compared to locks that were not implanted. It's important to note that in no year is there a significant discount. In three of the years, um, there's a significant premium associated with implanted lots. So kind of keeping that in mind, is there opportunity in your operation to use implants um, as a way to maybe add pounds to calves whenever you're selling them? The last program that I'm going to share with you about today is the source and age verification. And if anybody's unfamiliar um, with this program, it's really telling us the source and the age. So the source claim is to ensure that the cattle were born and raised on your operation. And the age claim is telling us the first and the last calf that was born, so they know the range um, of the age for those calves in that calf crop. So going back to the lot example, how do we know if a lot um, is source or age verified? It tells us right on the lot exam or right on the lot information the seller belongs. So yes or no, they were not source and age verified. So again, looking at the trends for this particular program. Um, 2010, about 46, we saw it go up, and now it's at about 29% of lots that are source and age verified. So there's been some differences from year to year in terms of the number of lots that are enrolled um, in a source, source and age verification program. Taking a look at the premiums um, for source and age verification, um, the smallest premium was in 2018 at 76 cents per hundredweight. And the greatest premium would have been 2015 um, at just over $4 per 100 weight. So again, there's variation in the premiums from year to year associated um, with any of these programs that I'm sharing with you. So it's very important to keep in mind. So with that, um, we've covered a lot of different topics. I've showed you a lot of information. What are really the key takeaway points from this? A good vaccination program is worth a lot to a buyer. If you think about if you're a buyer wanting to purchase calves, you want to know information about those calves, and you, I would assume, like to purchase a low-risk product. The breed composition of those calves. There's value to different breed compositions, um, and the buyers see that, and so they're willing to pay more for certain breed compositions. Thinking about implants, if you're not going to be using a natural program um, or some kind of program that does not allow you to use those, is there opportunity to add pounds to your calves to have a heavier calf whenever you go to sell them, um, and maybe gain premiums in that way. Also think about how you market your calves. Um, do you just take them and take the price that is available that day? Or do you really work to watch the market and see maybe when the best opportunity is to market your calves, as well as know what buyers are gonna be around to want to purchase them? Additional programs. Um, there could be additional programs that you could be using in your operation if it fits, um, that maybe could have premiums associated as well. But remember, those premiums are variable from year to year, and so keeping that in mind as you plan for how you're going to market your calves um, is very important. But really the key is to market those calves to capture value. The more information that you're able to provide to a buyer about the product that you're selling, um, the more that they know about the product that they're going to purchase. So really the key to capturing value is market what you have to those buyers. So with that, um, that's all I have, but we...